What is up? Welcome back to a, another Salt and Popper Saturday video. And today we are bringing you a brand new brew uh, from yours truly. I saw while I was combing through the League and 5 drops over the last week or two, a really interesting list that was a mono red or a very close to mono red. They called it like 12 tremors or something along those lines. And it ran... 12 of these impact tremor type effects it ran for impact tremors the namesake it ran four molten gatekeepers and then it also ran four witty roast masters now my list is not running witty roast master we changed things up a little bit to give us a bit of a backup plan uh it was also running a, a couple numbers of hissing iguana which i did really like in this list so i did keep it um, but this is my own spin on that idea. Uh, I started with a similar base with the Impact Tremors and Molten Gatekeepers. You'll see four of each of them here and two Hissing Iguanas. Um, but things change a little bit. So we've got 19 land. We've got uh, Snow-Covered Mountains, two Snow-Covered Forests, four Twisted Landscapes, and two Highland Forests. Uh, this is really because this deck is Draw Light. Um, outside of the Malevolent Rumbles, we don't have a ton of draw. We have th four Glimpse the Impossibles, which, generally speaking, you want to use as a make three dudes in this deck. So you don't actually want to use this as draw. So we really want to maximize uh, our cards during the game, and we don't want to hit land drops when we don't need them. So we have a full four of the fetch land here to limit our land drops and three generous ends just to make sure that we have green mana available to us very early. Uh, we don't need much green mana. As you can see, we have two copies of you meet in a tavern, which is the only double green card we're running. Um, but other than that, everything is a single green and we only really are trying to ramp into this chrysalis on turn three. So as long as we have a green land on turn two, uh, we'll be just fine. <clears throat> That works out. Uh, we are running a couple strange cards you might not have seen before. We are running four Brood Birthing. Now, I saw this in the original list and knew it needed to be in my version. Uh, this is a two-mana sorcery. If you, if you control an Eldrazi spawn, it makes three Eldrazi spawn. Otherwise, you just get one. This card is crazy good. Uh, for this list. We're running Malevolent Rumble, obviously. It's just a very strong card. We're running Nest Invader. This is to maximize our turn three Chrysalis options. And then we're running a couple Burning Tree Emissaries. Now, as I mentioned, green mana is fairly important in the stack, and we want to make sure we have access to it. So this is another way for us to do that. It just kind of helps smooth things out um, on some of those more awkward draws. It also helps us go a little bit wider, a little bit faster. This helps us keep up with some of those more aggressive decks. Like I said, we have three or uh, four Glimpse the Impossibles on three. Uh, this can be a draw three. Generally speaking, you want to make three dudes out of this. We're running those Molten Gatekeepers I mentioned and two Hissing Iguanas. Four Writhing Chrysalis. Uh, this is really the workhorse of the deck. This is going to get you through a lot of those mid games. We just want to drop this on turn three as often as possible. Uh, and it's really going to gum up the board. It's going to ramp us into uh, more card draw, more gatekeepers, those type of impact tremor effects. It also is a lightning bolt uh, if you already have an impact tremors down, which is very, very good. And then I have uh, two you meet in a taverns. Now, obviously, this can get uh, creatures, although not a ton of our deck is fetchable by this you meet in a tavern. What this is really here for is that second ability uh, creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Uh, this is going to give us kind of an out where we have gummed up the board with a ton of brood tokens, uh, but we haven't finished off the opponent and they kind of just stop attacking into us because we have a giant chrysalis, we have a hand or something like that in play. Um, and this just gives us a way to kind of maximize our value on all of those Eldrazi spawns that we're creating. And it, it's kind of in his Sanguanar spots three and four. Um, this is just to give us an alternate plan so we can win in combat or we can win by just fetching, sacking our board. Um, worth noting, this could definitely be something like makeshift munitions. Um, I wouldn't hate that in this spot and maybe that is something we can test out in the future. This is very much still in trial, so keep that in mind. This is a rough draft of this deck, but I've been playing it a lot lately and I really think that there's some merit in this type of strategy with the Molten Gatekeepers and the Impact Tremors. Uh, I wasn't super impressed by Witty Roast Master. I tried it as a two of, but it just kind of felt a little bit clunky to me. I wasn't a huge fan. 
Uh, the three generous ints, like I said before, they're there to fetch up our Highland Forest. And then we have a card that has not seen Popper play uh, ever that I know of. We have Hand of Emrakul, so we can sacrifice four spawns rather than play its mana cost. It's a 7-7 seven, seven with Annihilator 1. This card's really cool, and it shuts down a lot of the bigger decks. I know Mono Blue Terror is really, really popular right now. And although they do have Bounce in their deck, obviously, um, not a ton of things on our board want to be Bounced. Uh, I mean, if they bounce a Chrysalis, they reset the counters, but we get three more creatures. If we've got, you know, a Impact Tremors or a Gatekeeper or something in play, that damage can stack up really quickly. Uh, it also just is a big threat, so they don't really want to bounce it, they kind of have to bounce it. Hand of Emrakul is very similar. Uh, we get to play it just by sacrificing some of our spawns. You know, we don't have to tap out nine mana or anything like that. And if this lands against uh, a deck that doesn't immediately have an answer or like have a hard removal spell to get rid of it, this card can very quickly swing the game in your favor. So big fan there. Um, moving to the sideboard, we have a couple Gorilla Shamans. We have three Troublemaker Oofs. We almost always have a token in play. Uh, so we can always bargain this to exile. Uh, two Gorilla Shamans just kind of shore up that affinity matchup to target those artifact lands and some of the other more aggressive decks that are running those, like uh, Rakdos and Koldatha. For Lightning Bolts, this is mainly for the Glee combo. I, I know they're running Snakeskin, you know, um, uh, Tamiyo Safekeeping, that kind of thing, but ultimately we just need cheap interaction to be able to... Uh, stop some of those more combo-y decks until we can kind of mid-range, almost jundum out style um, of, of value play here. And the Lightning Bolts fit that pretty nicely. We don't have any Cascade uh, in the deck, so the one-drops really don't hurt us all that much. Although we certainly could try to find room for some Cascade in future variations of this deck. Right now, I think the Lightning Bolts out of the side are doing just fine. Three Relics uh, there to stop any of the Graveyard Shenanigans. And then three Wrap Invigors, this is mainly just to um, protect our own board in the face of things like Breath Weapon, uh, Fiery Cannonade, things of that nature. Uh, this is going to let us save our um, Eldrazi spawn tokens, and really just is kind of an all-around uh, safe bet. Obviously, against things like Crypt Rats, uh, with... Toxin or Cart Clan Shaman with Toxin, uh, you may want to just sack off the Eldrazi spawn so that they don't gain extra life. Um, but in the event that you, you know, maybe have a meat and tavern and you want to swing back, you can definitely bring in the Rap of Vigors in those matchups. Uh, but that's the deck. We're going to start off. I've got three matches for you guys today. So we're going to kick it off. Uh, I would love to hear you guys' opinion of this deck and uh, suggestions or different versions. Drop me some Moxfield links down below. Uh, for inspiration, really looking to kind of think tank and hive mind uh, new versions of this deck and see where we can get it in this meta, because I do think there's some uh, some definite merit here. Uh, this format is very non-interactive lately. Obviously, there are powerful interaction tools, but generally speaking, a lot of these decks uh, in this metagame have just become kind of do my thing better than you do your thing. Uh, and this deck puts a very fast clock and a lot of pressure and it gets a huge amount of burst potential and inevitability on these gatekeepers and impact tremors, um, albeit it is a little bit slow. So if you have time to set up, you're usually going to win the late game. If you don't have time to set up, I think that's where the deck struggles. So keep that in mind. Let's jump into match number one, and I'll show you guys what the deck looks like in action. Alrighty, guys, we're getting ready to go into match number one. This is against Trans Am 355. Uh, we win the dice roll, so we are on the play with our Red Green Tremors build. Uh, before we get started in the feature matches today, remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, for those of you that don't follow me on Twitter and haven't checked out my Discord or community post, I have officially been included into the MTGO Creator Program. So if you see uh, a new account name on some of these uh, game reviews or replays in the near future, uh, just keep in mind that's the uh, Daybreak account. 
Uh, but that means that there will be some Playpoint giveaways as well as some other awesome opportunities for this channel coming up in the very near future. So stay tuned for that and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you keep updated on all of my community posts because I think that's where the majority of these giveaways are going to be. Um, other than that, guys, let's jump in to this. Let's see what our opening hand is going to look like. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got two land, we've got an Ent, we've got a Rumble, an Estimator, a Gatekeeper, and a Chrysalis. I mean, this is a great hand. We're going to run with this. Opponent goes down to six, so we're just going to start on a tap land here. Opponent also starts on a tap land. This is a gain land, though, so a little bit strange. We top deck a Tremors, which is fantastic. We're just going to get that down on two. Opponent shows us a Kiln Fiend, which is uh, sort of terrifying here. <clears throat> we're just going to fetch up a land into a nest invader hope that we're not dead um we're not going to be able to put up a huge threat against the opponent right away they do have crash through to immediately give it trample which is pretty brutal and then they have assault strobe so we're going to block here just to mitigate some of the damage we're going to take a whole 12 here we're going to force cycle and sack into a writhing chrysalis. Fully expect that we're just going to have to let this uh, kiln fiend eat this chrysalis. Uh, but hopefully not. <clears throat> Opponent has double crash through into a blue land. But they don't have anything to make it like unblockable or anything like that. So we just donate the chrysalis to the kiln fiend. Go to four. Play the Gatekeeper into a Malevolent Rumble. We were really hoping to hit another Chrysalis there, but we just didn't have it in us. Opponent goes to 13, though, off these Impact Tremors. They do stack up really quick. You notice we haven't attacked one time, but uh, opponent is down to 14. <clears throat> we have a Umeet in a Tavern here, which is pretty good. We're just going to play it and swing out. Uh, unfortunately... They go to four. We don't have a way to kill them because, well, we can't uh, play the Nest Invader and the Umeet in a Tavern, which is pretty brutal. Um, also, because that, that would have been lethal uh, Exaxes, which is funny. Um, but also, we probably could have just held it there and played the Nest Invader with some mana up and seen if they flipped the Delver and or uh, was able to kill us. They had gone through three crash throughs, so... There is a world in which they didn't have trample, but we scoop it up. We just go to game number two. All right, so we lost. We're on the play. This is a, another perfectly fine hand. As for the sideboard plan, uh, we took out a hand, you meet in the tavern, and two gatekeepers. We brought in all four of the lightning bolts. Really, we're just going to play this uh, in, in such a way that we're going to try to uh, remove their kiln fiends uh, and really just... Hope that they don't get there. Uh, but this is definitely a keep. So we're going to go ahead and run it. Opponent keeps seven this time. We're just going to play the Twisted Landscape. Now we'll fetch it end of turn. And we've got our green source. We top deck a tap land. A little bit uncomfortable. We're just going to go uh, Malevolent Rumble here. We were looking for a tap land, but we find another Chrysalis. So... We do hit the untapped land, though, right on time. So we just go straight into this Chrysalis. And this is really kind of a check to see if the opponent has a Salt Strobe again. Uh, they do have a Salt Strobe. But if they don't have anything else, we're just going to take it and go to 6 here. Because now with double Chrysalis... I feel pretty confident that we're going to be able to uh, put enough things on the board and make these chrysalises big enough that they're able to block out. They have reach, obviously, so we're not really worried about this Delver. Opponent has the Lightning Bolt to go for our face. Just pretty scary, um, but they just kind of donate this Kiln Fiend to us. And they didn't even have a second Lightning Bolt to back it up, which is pretty crazy to me. Uh, we do go ahead and hit the Glimpse. We find an Impact Tremors off that and make some tokens with these Nest Invaders. Opponent goes down to 11. They have a crash through, but we still have a 5-6 that could be a, what, 9-10? Uh, 
uh, and they are certainly dead, so they scoop it up. Game number three, obviously, we're on the draw this time because we win the last game. Uh, this hand does have a bolt. It has an end to get green. It has a chrysalis and a level at rumble, so ideally we could turn three a chrysalis if we don't need to bolt right away. Uh, we're definitely going to run this hand. Opponent leads on a Delver of Secrets. We top deck another bolt, which is fantastic. It frees us up to just bolt that Delver. Now we get to see if the opponent has a Festival Crasher or something on two. They don't have a follow-up, which is fantastic. Uh, because we didn't have mana to cycle the Generous Ent, we're just going to hold up this Lightning Bolt again. We'll cycle the Ent at end of turn. We're going to get an untapped land source, so we can play the Malevolent Rumble while holding up Bolt. Uh, opponent has a Mana Leak, which is a super strange inclusion here. Would have expected to see something like Spell Pierce in that slot. Uh, mana leak just doesn't seem like the most efficient option. Um, but we are one and one with them, so their deck is obviously pretty good. They lead into a Festival Crasher here. We do have a Bolt at end of turn to clear that up, and that's going to let us go right into uh, this Burning Tree into a Chrysalis. Just to kind of provide a, a little bit of pressure and turn things around, we do still have a Backup Bolt which is great, and we're going to be able to hit this Iguanar down, but we top deck another Chrysalis, which is pretty crazy. We sack the two spawns there to cast the second Chrysalis because it allows us to play an Iguanar right away. Opponent has a Shadow Rift to give their creature Shadow. They have a Bolt. Lava Dart is going to be used here. And they tap down to Mana Leak their own Lava Dart. Uh, not sure what they were trying to go for there, but they definitely weren't going to hit Lethal without, like, Land Assault Strobe. Um, but we had the bullet to kill the Festival Crasher anyway after they tapped out for the Mana Leak. So GG's to the opponent. Uh, game over against Blue Red Kiln Fiend. This one's a little bit of a dark horse. Let's try something a little bit more meta for match number two. All right, match number two. This is against uh, Kuyaken TV. We are on the draw. And if you guys are enjoying the video, please let me know down in the comments below. I do read and respond to every comment myself. And it really does just let me know that you guys like the content that's coming out. Um, this one is a little bit different than normal. Normally I'm highlighting a deck that did well or playing a deck that is popular. This one is uh, one of my own creations. So hope you guys enjoy uh, a little bit of brewer content because I do love brewing. Uh, and I would love to bring you guys more of that on the channel, so let me down, let me know down below if you guys are down for that. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't think this hand is going to do enough for us, so we're going to go ahead and mulligan. This hand looks very similar, but I think overall it's going to be better for us. Um, double Gatekeeper is pretty powerful. Wish we could have found a, a Chrysalis, but that's kind of how it goes. We're going to just put the Ent back because we already have a uh, Tutor for green. And we're going to have Malevolent Rumble to refill. We top deck an Estivator, which is great for us here. Uh, opponent has Wild Growth into a Malevolent Rumble. So this looks like Ponza. Uh, we left the uh, Twisted Landscape here just so we didn't get um, Thermocarsted or something. And we'll go for the Malevolent Rumble on my turn. Get a Spawn Token. We hit a Twisted Landscape, which is a little unfortunate to uh, drop some cards there, but the Molten Gatekeeper has Unearth, so not that big a deal. Opponent gets their Chrysalis online first, which is brutal in this matchup. This is going to play very similar to a Mirror Match if they don't have um, uh, Land Destruction. They do, however, have Initiative, which is pretty brutal. We're just going to take the two here. Get land. We're going to play a Molten Gatekeeper. We have Brood Birthing here, but we're going to be a little bit greedy. This is a lot of damage. If we can get all three Gatekeepers, double Brood Birthing is 18. So we can almost one-shot the opponent here. <clears throat> opponent has a Boarding Party, which is pretty brutal. Putting a lot of pressure on us. We're going to take 9, go to 9. We hit a Hissing Iguanar. Now I'm going to quickly pause here because this is a very crucial turn. We're obviously probably dead next turn. Um, we have our second Gatekeeper. We have a Molten Gatekeeper in the graveyard. We have double Brood Birthing. So 
Uh, we have a lot of lines here with this hissing iguana. It really comes down to how we want to play this out. Uh, ultimately, I think we're supposed to unearth the gatekeeper here, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, we go ahead and unearth the gatekeeper. Then we have a brood birthing to deal nine. But because we don't have a second red to play another brood birthing or a hissing one or um, we're kind of SOL. I think ultimately what I'm supposed to do is play uh, the unearth into the iguana or the unearth into the brood birthing and then brood birthing again. If we unearth into brood birthing, brood birthing, um, we're still one red shy of playing the iguana or the other molten gatekeeper. But that gives us. 6, 12 damage. I think if we uh, unearth the Molten Gatekeeper and then play the Hissing Iguana... Now, I, I think we're not quite there. I think we're missing a red. If you can spot a lethal here, please let me know what the line was. Because uh, although it doesn't show it in the replay, I clocked here for... Uh, a little bit trying to figure out the way to win this. Uh, didn't really find a way in the moment. And uh, upon a couple different reviews of this game, I still can't quite see it. Uh, so let me know if you can spot the lethal here. I think there might be one, but honestly, it's a, a little bit strange. So let me know if you can find it. But opponent has the spawn token to block. And... Uh, we're not dead, which is nice, but because we're not dead, if we had played the Iguanar, if we had played the Iguanar, uh, we would have killed the opponent here. Opponent had one blocker, which is just a little bit too much for us with the double Molten Gatekeeper. Now, this turn, however, was a total misplay. Um, we This turn was a total misplay. So I play the Hissing Guana here thinking that I don't have a way to cast um, my Brood Birthing for um, enough damage here. Uh, with this attack, the opponent goes down to three. What I didn't count on was if I had just played the Impact Tremors and then unearthed both Gatekeepers, uh, with the land drop for the initiative, I would have been able to play this Brood Birthing to get uh, three damage and kill them. So I would have actually been able to win the game here uh, if I had really like taken my time. Just miss Lethal here. Uh, a little bit sad. But yeah, if we if we rewind this, if we play the impact tremors, then we unearth gatekeeper, then we unearth gatekeeper instead of playing the hissing iguana. Then we attack, we take the initiative, we find a mountain, we play the mountain, we have a mountain and uh, untapped snow covered forest to then um, play this brood birthing for a single spawn, but we deal three damage. Uh, that was the line to win the game here. Definitely punted this one off, unfortunately. But we were very, very close. Just missed it in the moment, but that was the win here. Good showing from the deck, though, to race uh, this fully powered, like, red-green stompy with boarding party. Definitely had a lot of damage there. Um, if we had had one more red source, funny enough, I, th I think we could have killed them last turn. But came down to it. We were able to win the game here. We just didn't find it in the moment so that's how it goes sometimes sometimes you pump one off but let's roll into game number two here against the uh gruel beatdown gruel cascade whatever you want to call it gruel drazi aggro uh we are on the play this time and this is a perfectly interesting hand this is a much better hand we're gonna keep this one 
throw back a mountain just because we have two twisted landscapes so we're able to uh, fish out a bunch opponent leads on an arbor elf pretty brutal still unsure whether or not the opponent has the um ponza in the deck we don't have a choice here we need to run out this impact tremors opponent has chrysalis out very early which is pretty brutal we're gonna play a molten gatekeeper really kind of suiting up for a big glimpse the impossible nest invader sort of turn Let's it rip for an Altasaur into a Weather the Storm for the Cascade Trigger. So not the worst Cascade Trigger that could have been. But Altasaur definitely uh, provides a problem. We hit an untapped land though, which is pretty great. Unfortunately, we misplay a little bit here. Um, if we would have tapped better, we would have been able to play the Nest Invader. But that's okay. We take six damage here. Just undo that Weather the Storm. And really, this was all to uh, try to sit on this Hand of Emrakul if we can get it out. We do top deck another Impact Tremors, which is pretty nice. This is going to deal uh, four more damage. So we are starting to apply some pressure here. We're just going to play the Hand of Emrakul. If the opponent has a, another Umeet in a Tavern, I mean, we're pretty cooked anyway. But this should slow things down a little bit. This will sandwall or sandbag at least one of their big threats. We just need to top deck some more gas, and we hit a Mountain. Uh, definitely hurts there. Giving the opponent time to put another Chrysalis on board is definitely rough. And uh, they have more Eldrazi. So they're definitely going to be able to afford an attack here, which is pretty rough. Uh, and that is going to do it. Uh, we're able to block, but obviously they've got five Eldrazi spawns here. So these Riven Chrysalises are huge. Sucks to uh, throw game one like that, but. Definitely got stomped out in game number two. Could not keep up there. Just had a little bit of an awkward mulligan and uh, was not able to put it together. So small inaccuracies with this deck really compound. Uh, you definitely have to sequence well, and I was learning that. So it didn't hold up against Girl Aggro, but I have one final match for you guys. All right, this is match number three against Ace of Swords MTG. We are on the play. Let's see what this one has in store for us. This is a perfectly okay hand uh we have impact tremors we have writhing chrysalis we have an int we have a glimpse i mean we definitely have a lot of damage here opponent shows us an island so this could be a couple of things it could be um fairies it could be uh, mono blue terror or something like that opponent has turn one spell pierce which is pretty brutal uh would have liked to get that impact tremors down early we play Impact Tremors into Impact Tremors. We get double counterspelled. Um, fortunately for us, really, um, it's not hugely detrimental. Um, Impact Tremors is a great tool for this deck, and it really is kind of, you know, the lifeblood of this deck. But in this matchup specifically, as soon as we see that Delver, it really just becomes about landing a Writhing Chrysalis. And if they're spending counter magic on our impact tremors, that means that they don't have it for our writing chrysalis. So we were lucky enough to be able to get this one down. We did take a land from the glimpse. Uh, ended up top decking it, didn't need it. Uh, but we'll use that fetch. Now we have second writhing chrysalis. into an iguanar so we have a lot of pressure on the opponent we're definitely able to stop this Talarian terror opponent has a deem inferior new card uh i didn't think would see much play not sure that it is seeing much play but it definitely seems pretty good in this list we hit a brood birthing and glimpse the impossible now funny enough that glimpse the impossible was a huge error because if the opponent had let that resolve we would not have been able to play the next couple of cards uh, we would have gotten rid of a substantial amount of threats uh, and with that second team inferior we now know that our top two cards are writhing chrysalis so we are able to just chump block the Talarian Terror and sacrifice to Hissing Iguanar. We're going to generate more blockers than they can generate attackers, and they are on a clock. Right now we have seven spawns, and we're going to go up to nine spawns uh, on the next top deck unless they have another counter spell. So we have nine spawn tokens. Uh, they are in an effective two, which is not strong enough, and eventually we're going to find 
uh, another way to make spawns to finish off this game. But we have successfully stabilized against Mono Blue Terror, and they had a fantastic start. So we can definitely see that this deck is strong enough to keep up with one of the better decks in the meta. They go ahead and Demon Furrier again, but this time we have a Glimpse of the Impossible. And we have eight spawn tokens, so they are going to scoop it up with the Glimpse of the Impossible and the Writhing Chrysalis. Uh, GG to the opponent there. Good game number one. Good showing for this deck, I think. All right, game number two on the draw. Uh, this is another perfectly fine hand. We saw the power of Writhing Chrysalis against the opponent in the last game. For our sideboard plan... Unfortunately, we don't have any red blasts in the sideboard, which would certainly anchor this matchup for us. But um, ultimately, we ended up going with no sideboard selections here and just trying to uh, recreate game number one. This is a perfectly fine hand. I'm going to go ahead and keep it and roll with it. Opponent out on a ponder. They do have the ability to hold up a counter spell for this impact tremors again, though. We have a meet in a tavern, which is an interesting refill option. We're going to get our double green off of that. We lead impact tremors into our blue blast. Um, you know, obviously that's fine. It's not ideal, but it is fine. Once again, we just have to chip through the um, amount of removal the opponent or the amount of counter magic and permission the opponent can have. They will have less permission than we have threats, and we have a very threat dense hand. So. We go ahead and Malevolent Rumble. That's going to give us an Eldrazi spawn. We'll fetch off of the landscape. We go for another Impact Tremors. They do have another Counter Spell, but that's fine. We're going to resolve a Brood Birthing. Now that we're kind of out of uh, ways to deal damage with ETBs, uh, we just pull the trigger on the Brood Birthing to get it down before we play this Chrysalis. Um... Funny enough, we top deck the Molten Gatekeeper, so we would have had 6 damage if we unearth and play this Molten Gatekeeper. Opponent has a Serpent. It's fine. We have 6 spawns currently, so we just, you know, pay the tax here. And uh, play the longer game. We go with the Nest Invader. Once again, as long as we're generating creatures to the board, we're gonna outrace them. Because we can just stonewall their creatures with any of our threats. And uh, we can chump block pretty much all day with these spawn tokens. Uh, if we hit a green source here, we're actually in super funny territory with the Sue Meat in a Tavern. Uh, opponent has the extra counter spell. Which is pretty unfortunate. They go ahead and Artful Dodge hit us for 6. We get a 14, but that's fine. We land this Hand of Emrakul. Uh, which while if they deem inferior, we're going to have some problems, but looks like we're finally going to stick a writhing chrysalis and the opponent sticks it up. Uh, I mean, seems fair, right? They have three counter spells. We hit three chrysalis. Uh, eventually one of us is going to stick something that matters and it just happened to be me first. Uh, definitely showcasing the power of this deck, even through red elemental blast. This deck has all the gas that it needs to keep going and still have resources in hand. Um, we certainly could have done a double Molten Gatekeeper play soon. So lots of options. And the deck is uh, very much uh, viable, I think, in today's metagame. So give it a try. Let me know what you think of the deck. The deck list is going to be down. Uh, link to my mox field in the description. So check it out there. Um, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this list. If you have ideas or if uh, you make your own version of this deck, go ahead and post your deck links down below. I'd love to take a look at them and see what we could come up with because I think there's something here. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in this week, guys. Hope you enjoyed this little brew session. And as usual, goodbye forever unless I see you next time.